first part of my career in banking for a variety of different banks in the city. Um, and for the most part, I did enjoy um, that role. But um, as I said earlier, I've always been passionate about music and events, so I've always kind of dabbled in it like, on the side. Um, I think that's also really important for the youth as well, like, just to make sure that you're, you know, if you're passionate about something in your spare time, like, continue to do that. So when I was at university, although my degree was not related to music and events, I made sure that I you know, met up with the station manager for the radio station. I said, like, I really would love to present. So I started presenting. They gave me like, the worst spot ever at the beginning, like 6 o'clock in the morning or so. Um, and but then you know, I showed dedication. I turned up. I did what I had to do on that slot. And then moved into drive time. And I absolutely loved that. And during the radio show, I would get artists in as well. I would interview them on the show. Um, and that led to um, a work experience placement with Sony Music. So I went to work with Sony Music um, during the summer holidays, and that also then turned into a part-time job while I was at university. So what I had to do then, um, this was a time of like social crew, so I'm kind of showing my age as well, but like, I absolutely love social crew, and so whenever like, artists such as social would come up to the University of Birmingham area, I would be in charge of putting their tracks on radio, getting press to interview them, any kind of backstage photos, things like that. I was the girl that did that. So absolutely loved it. So although it had nothing to do with my degree, um, you know, the good thing, as we talked about earlier, is with African parents, so I'm going in, my parents would never let me do music or media studies at degree. So I kept them happy by doing the maths, but you know, in my spare time, I got to dabble into what I actually really enjoy. So as I said, fast forward, working in banking, got to a point where I was like, I just want to, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, you know, what else can I do that I would feel passionate about? And so, yeah, I just as I said, it reminded me of the time when I was doing the radio, when I was interviewing artists, and I thought, right, I'd love to do something with music and events. And during that, that's I started to uh, manage a hip-hop artist. So again, all on the side, so while I was in the day, working in banking, I was managing this great artist called Michael Payne, who's doing really well right now, actually. And during my time managing him, that's when I really saw there was a gap in the market for this one-stop destination to find out about up-and-coming artists such as mine, um, who were predominantly doing hip-hop, urban, and people to buy tickets. When we were doing events, people were literally having to kind of text me their names or call me to come and meet them, like to hand out tickets and stuff like that. Um, you know, as a girl and meeting random people to give out tickets, didn't really want to do this. <laughs> so I thought, like, surely there's a better way. Like, why isn't this actually online? Um, and when I looked into it, I saw that all the other kind of events websites out there were always catered for like pop and mainstream, and it's like our events were forgotten. You know, our events were offline, word of mouth, using kind of archaic methods essentially. And I thought, you know, why can't there be like a ticket master for us, essentially, celebrating our culture, a place where, you know, people that want to go to urban events can go to a site that they can discover those events and buy tickets. And so through all those little experiences, I think the key point that I want to add to it is that all the majority of the experiences I did in my spare time, like to always like fill up your spare time with really great stuff, that led me to become a CEO of Shoots. Come on, guys, the people are amazing, amazing. You saw a cat, a cat in the market, you just moved, you did something about it. Amazing. Um, and you touched on something else there, which I think is key to um, young people here in the room, around time and using your time wisely. Um, and, and I would say definitely get out of your comfort zone, young people. And, you know, there's a lot out there to do. You don't have to be on social media all day, watching people that are already making their money. But, you know, get out there, get involved in extracurricular stuff, get involved in student radio, writing for the newspaper, anything new, you know, why not give it a go? Why not give it a try? You gave it a try, Louise, and look, it paid off for you, right? So I'm going to move over to you, Addy Shogun. And can I call you Addy? I'll call you Smaid. Smaid, all right, I'll call you Smaid. I like that. So Smaid, um, did you always know that you were going to be in the music business? Was that always a plan for you? Because I know you said earlier that your parents, you know, wanted you to go down the academic route, like most of us here on the panel. But, you know, did you have a vision for this big career to be this successful entrepreneur within the music industry? No, at all. Um, I come from a very disciplined home, but my dad is a you know, very strict father. For 19 years while I was in Lagos, I never went out you know, without maybe like a, a bodyguard, which is like a home call, or um, the dry around stuff. So I never went to it. But when I got here, uh, my friend took me out there once, and uh, it was in very good old okay road. And to get into the club was really tough. So, but eventually we went in, we all paid 20 pounds. 
you know, and that registered in my head. You know, 20 pounds and there was about three, four hundred people in the club. You know, so I calculated and I said I had an idea and said, um, I didn't like the music because we weren't playing any African music. You know, coming from Lagos, um, there was Yawilo, and the Peace Square, you know, and uh, from Jersey, the band, you know, happened there. So I had ideas that, okay, I can create something where, you know, my, my own event, I play my own music and invite my own people, you know. So um, that was how um, Smith basically tied about, you know, with the club business. And then over time, we um, made a new generation of um, Afri Afro pop music started coming around with um, Whiskey, the Ego. So the first show that happened was Afri Afro Beats Festival. That was in um, HM Apollo. I did that with my colleagues in the business, um, uh, Coco Bar and uh, DJ Brante. Shout out to DJ Brante, he goes to the show. You know, and uh, we did the second one again, amazing, successful event. And, um, Right there, there was no stopping them going back to me because I just saw something really powerful, strong, because the music is so powerful. And uh, yeah, I started creating. While everybody was going back, laying back, and competing with each other, I just started creating my own thing. I uh, met with David, you know, did his first show, and Kali was the host. You know, uh, met with Whiskey, did Whiskey show. And now, Afro Nation, you know, but it's been a, it's been a journey, it's been a process, yeah. you know. So but, over the years. But a great example of how hard work and consistency pays off, right? Success is hard work, so it is. you just have to put in work. It really is. Thank you for sharing Thank that. You. So Eddie, it's been an inspirational, you know, road for you from Kingston University. Um, it, it's great to see um, all the amazing things you've done in your career. If there are any young people in the room right now that are facing a career challenge, not sure what to do next, what would your advice be for them, based on some of your experiences? Well, I think human beings are we're, we're very special species because um, we always base the world on from what we see. And I'm always saying, you know, people are quick to advise you, and this advice is really good, but people always advise you based on their limits. You know, um, like Andrew was talking about, you know, that's, that's my brother, that's my, my household for me, so he's seen the journey, he was talking about jumping. You know, um, and it's, it's crazy with me over the years in my career, people have kept on saying, no, that doesn't work, you can't cross over with this, this will not work. But I would say to the young people, if you feel something in your heart and express it, someone said very importantly earlier that as parents, we tend to shut our children up. You know, just be a child. But you know, if a child is able to go out and organize themselves and commit some crazy crimes, but they've organized themselves, but they're influencing a lot, then they're able to do the, the, the direct opposite and influence the world. So for me, it, that's always been the case. Um, I think when my dad said to me, you know, stand up, well, comedy would never work. And I, I remember my mum saying, just let him do what he has to do with you. But he, it's always dad, the mum, right? It's always it's the mum to thank them. It's always the mum. My dad, my dad didn't speak to me for like a year. When yeah. I was, he heard I'm out there making people laugh. You know, and my sisters would tell him I'm good, come and watch. My dad very stubbornly wasn't having it. And I remember the first time, um, somehow my mum convinced him, I still don't know how. But the first time that came to watch me perform, it was in a crowd like this, it was in the middle, just sitting there, and everyone was laughing. I was killing the show. My dad was not laughing for a second. He was just nodding, he was just looking around, he was nodding. Every joke, he was nodding. And at the end, I came over to him, and I said, Dad, you always laughing. Why would you not laugh? Did you not enjoy the show? But no, no, the show was amazing. You are talented. I didn't know he was this good. So like, the whole point of comedy is to laugh. And when I said, no, I was too busy counting the money. 20 pounds, 20 pounds, 20 pounds. He worked out, he said, this is a good career, you know? But I had to, you know, it's almost like the same way I've had these teachers, I had to show my dad that comedy isn't just about laughter. In fact, some of the most serious people are comedians. You know, we tell stories, we laugh, and in order to break things down, you use laughter. That's what they call breaking the ice. Your first date, make her laugh, and you're in. You understand? But over the years, that's what it's been for me. It's, it, it has been about constantly just showing that be who you are. Like, be proud of where you come from. You will always be a diluted version of someone else. But you'll always be a genuine, full, concentrated version of yourself. As a Congolese, um, you know, growing up in this country, I realized we were the minority amongst the Nigerians and the Ghanaians, you know, the Ugandans, Zimbabweans, but I stayed true to myself and I've been able to navigate, you know, my career throughout, you know, doing shows with Smith, performing on stages with Kojo, 
you know, and just being able to be a Congolese and tell a story from my point of view, being a Congolese in Britain, and if you stay true to who you are, it will open those doors because we all have a purpose. You know, and if you stay true to your purpose, and people are people talk about purpose as this it's this mysterious thing. It's whatever you feel every day when you wake up. And you have that burning desire to make a difference. You know if it's bad, that's not your purpose. You can feel it. But if you have that burning desire, just use the person that you are, the story that you have to continue moving forward. So my advice to young people is, take your advice, take people's advice, but remember, their advice is always based on their limit. You know, and the sky is not the limit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, so thank you. I love that. Let's appreciate him. Give him a round of applause. Go and let your environment define you. Yeah. Or where you're going, you know. And stay true to yourself. It's really important to stay true to yourself. It's valuable, especially if you're in the place of work. So, Pastor, what top tips do you have or advice for any young people here today that may be feeling like a bit lost or not sure what to do next? Okay, I'm just going to say that um, nobody is really defined by what they go through. Nobody. What you go through rather refines you. It doesn't define you. If you sleep in a garage, it doesn't mean you're a car. Then you're on the comedy line. <laughs> that was a bar. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, that's true. You are fine but by your challenges. Whatever we go through now. I, I believe that it's shaping us for our next level. I truly believe that. I always use this. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can find a house key. <laughs> yeah, sorry, um, you see, if you look at this key, I always use this as a demonstration to my people. The key is shaped on every side. It's got so many cuts. If you've got a key, you can look at your key. It's, it's shaped. Funny, amen. It's, it's cut out on all sorts of stuff. My pastor.